just let me just let me kind of take two minutes to uh, to introduce this workshop to you because we are always kind of think there is so much research ongoing in the charity and of course I mean everybody everybody here has their own condition their own muscular dystrophy or a related neuromuscular condition and, and, and you actually want to hear about what's happening in your condition. So what we kind of thought what we would do, how we kind of structure the workshop, that we, that we give you a very kind of brief presentation. And now in the first workshop, I'm going to talk just about clinical trial. And just generally what a clinical trial is, what the challenges are to, to move clinical trials forward, what the bottlenecks are, and then also kind of quickly where we are with clinical trials and then and then the most of the time I would like you maybe to have a look at our posters over there because there is uh, there is so much happening at the moment here in the UK as well we have actually more than 20 20 projects ongoing we as, as Robert mentioned this morning we put another million pound into into research projects again and there is uh, um, our research uh, communication officer Neil can you can you raise your hand there is Neil there and there is Alison there she's our senior research manager there there's also Libby Libby Wood from uh, from Newcastle there and we have uh, a couple of other young researchers here as well and and if you, you can ask them question whatever you want to ask whatever condition you're interested in and 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 they will they will they will then answer 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 your questions specific to, to, to your conditions and what, what you might maybe want to discuss. So, so my presentation here is, 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 I called it going global update on clinical trials because what's happening now there is more and more clinical trials taking place and of course with the rarity of the conditions we have to think internationally. I mean pharma, pharmaceutical companies who are starting to do clinical trial they, in the later phases, there are all international trials in order to get the patient numbers together. But before I talk about that, I, I kind of just want to talk in general, what is, what is a clinical trial? Because some of you, you hear about clinical trials and everybody is very eager to get into clinical trials. What, what actually is it and what is, it, what, what is this for? So a clinical trial is a research study that is testing the safety and efficacy of a drug or treatment in, in, in a human being. And in a clinical trial, if, if a scientist wants to do a clinical trial, there is a lot of discussion going on with his colleagues and, uh, and also kind of with regulators to, to kind of define a clinical trial protocol. And in the cl clinical trial protocol, this exactly sets out what is going to be done in the clinical trial. And, and, and this is there to ensure, to ensure the safety of, 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 of the people who are taking part in this clinical trial. And of course, participation is, is voluntary. And, and the, and, 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 but the clinical trial then um, defines who is allowed to take part. Because sometimes people come to me and say, why can't I be in this clinical trial? And, and I then have to explain to them that a clinical trial protocol is, is, is being defined in a way that the researchers get the answers as quickly as possible. And sometimes in order to do them, they hone into a very kind of small patient group and, um, and, 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 and only a small amount small kind of number of patients are eligible but this is not to exclude anybody this is only to get the to get the answer of the question they are asking is this drug or treatment working as quickly as possible and and of course I mean I know from, from talking with parents and and of also also um, people who are affected everybody is so eager to be in a clinical trial but I think I always kind of say this if, if, you, if you're going to go into a clinical trial, you have to give your consent. And, and if, you, if you're going to give your consent, this is the time as well to talk with a clinician because 
make sure that you really understand the risks and that you also understand the burden for your, for, for, for your families. Because sometimes there is a lot of traveling involved. Sometimes it's only swallowing a drug, but sometimes it's also kind of for your child or yourself lying on a bed and being still for a couple of hours to get, to get an infusion. So make really, really sure that you understand what this trial is about. And why do want people want to participate in clinical trials? And of course, it's to gain access to new research treatments, actually before they are now widely accessible. Of course, that's probably obvious that you would say that. But it's also to obtain very often expert medical care at leading health center facilities. Because if you, if you are in a clinical trial, you are very, very carefully monitored. And, and, and that kind of can give, you, can give you a benefit as well, that you being looked after for, for, for the time of a clinical trial by a multidisciplinary, very, very skilled um, um, expert team. But of course, there are also risks, because the intervention may have unpleasant or serious side effects. I mean, say for example, I, I, I'm just thinking of a clinical trial which actually um, had to be stopped because, because, the, uh, because the young boys with Duchenne, they got a very kind of strong nosebleed. And that's of course then very, very disappointing. So if you go into a clinical trial, please have, 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 have the risks in mind there, there as well. Or the drug or treatment may, may not be effective for, for the participant because Actually, in, 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 in normal, uh, in outside rare disease, in general drug developments, only, only one drug that enters the phase one actually comes out, uh, out of ten, comes out as, as, as effective in the end. Um, and of course, as, and which I had said already, participation in the trial may require more time and attention that you already had envisaged. So always try to understand the burden for your families. I mean, just want to mention the three phases. Of course, there is not one clinical trial, one clinical trial, and then what, what, uh, what the result of this then kind of immediately leads, leads to, a, to, a, to a treatment. A clinical trial is normally a series of studies that is divided into, into different phases. And a phase one evaluates the safety and some, sometimes, of course, already the effectiveness of, of, of a drug in a small, num in a small number of, 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 of healthy, healthy people sometimes or, or directly, um, uh, in, oops, sorry, um, of patients. And the phase two then, um, where there are more people then involved, then involved people who are affected, and it evaluates the, um, the drug or a treatment in a larger number of participants. If the phase two, if the results show that there is, that, that, that this drug might be effective, it still has to be tested in a very, very large number of, 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 of patients. And that's that's when, 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 when generally it will, um, clinical trials start to be costly. Um, and, and companies, then it's generally taken over by companies, and, um, uh, and it's many, many million pounds that is, or dollars that is involved to do these clinical trials. And what also kind of for the rare diseases, more than one center, of course, is involved. And, um, and, and I know the big GSK trial that was, that was carried out for Duchenne muscular dystrophy into exon skipping involved 37 clinical center in as many kind of countries, yes, a lot. So, so this, so, but, but if a phase, if then a phase three trial, is, is effective. Then after that, the company seeks market approval. And Robert was talking about that now for the first ever drug that has, that, um, that addresses, that addresses uh, the primary genetic, the genetic uh, 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 defect for Duchenne has been now approved. It's called Translana and it has been developed by PTC Therapeutics. And they have got now approval for, for the drug, which is of course fantastic, and I'll talk about this a little bit later. And then of course, still kind of, when the drug is, is on the market, because everybody then has access to it, companies still kind of are bound from the regulators to do so-called post-market approval surveillance. And they still then kind of need to, need, need to kind of monitor the people who take it, monitor, monitor, monitor the effects. But of course, then, it's then, then that's the stage when the drug would be available for, for, for everybody. 
So clinical trials. I mean, if I if I if I look, I, I found I found this I found this yeah on, on the web, and uh, um, clinical trials an uphill battle. So here you can actually see the cost rising when it actually comes to phase two and phase three, and 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 the muscular dystrophy campaign where they kind of link where they link in and where they kind of position themselves in funding research is, is a lot the basic research of drug discovery that we have done really for the, fi for the 50 years because, because this, is, this is the time when it's too risky for drug companies to take anything on but where, where actually the cost of the research being done is relatively, is relatively low and, and if there is any treatment or a, any kind of, sorry not treatment, if there is anything developed in the laboratory that is, that is then, um, that looks promising then it needs to be, uh, then it needs to be translated into clinical trial and that phase they also call it the funding va valley of value of death because there is, is a huge gap when, when the effectiveness of a drug has not, has, has not been shown but there is sitting something there in the laboratory um, in the laboratory that looks very, that looks very promising and, and where are the bottlenecks in order to get these drugs then translated in, in, into, a clinic, into a clinical trial and I call this here my translational triangle. So what do you actually need in, or in what do you actually need in order to translate promising technology into clinical trial? Of course you need to, you need to have your new, new technology sitting in the, uh, in the laboratory, exhaustively tested on, uh, in animal studies, on animal models, has been developed, it looks promising, but then what you also need, you need, you need, you need your patients. And for rare disease is this, this is sometimes this is sometimes very difficult because because I mean ten years ago when there was the first clinical trial for Duchenne muscular dystrophy um, the company that was involved it took them three years to, to get all the patients together actually to locate the patients and then uh, and and then to then start the clinical trial and that's of course time that is lost and the muscular dystrophy campaign has been quite involved in in in, in setting up patient registries so here is is um, data of patients collected where they are and Libby is here as I said from Newcastle the, through the Treat and MD initiative they're really kind of focusing on, on patient registries so that, that companies if they want to do a clinical trial that they have that data there and that is an endorsement for them to kind of invest into rare diseases but of course then you have the technology, then you have the patients, but what you also have is you have outcome, you need to have outcome measures. And sometimes to test, to test the efficacy or the efficiency of a drug on, on, on on, on, on muscles is, is, is quite difficult. I mean, clinical trials for, uh, for Duchenne are ongoing now for, for several years, but there is still kind of a lot of discussion in the, in the scientific community whether actually the six-minute walk test is, is actually the best thing. And, and, and here the charity has also kind of done a lot of things. I see Michael just, Michael nodding. Um, the, the families, and Gary was talking about, for example, raising fund for Ulrich de Schen muscular dystrophy. They were able to, to support a clinical fellow at uh, Regan, Regan Foley and she did, she did a whole study on how to best, how to best test a drug for Ulrich de Schen muscular dystrophy. And this has really now helped for the first clinical, clinical trial that is going in the US. Uh, this is maybe a quite of a boring part, and as, as kind of Regan was saying in, in, a, in a previously, the non-sexy part. But it is so, so important kind of to do this as well. So, so this whole kind of what we call clinical trial readiness is also something that really kind of the charity has, has addressed and endorsed with the help of the families, of course. Uh, and, and especially here, outcome measures as well, we ha um, because because uh, muscle tests can be ambiguous and um, uh, um, it, it's now also the search for biomarkers that's really really important biomarkers that 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 are bi biological compounds in the f in, in 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 the body and um, and, and re 
that can be identified and the level of, the, of, of this compound, they, they kind of mirror as a surrogate marker, I mean, the severity of the condition. So if you would have something like this, and of course, that would be a much, much better outcome measure as such. So what are the therapeutic approaches? And, and Neil has made a fantastic poster there. It is, I know it is for Duchenne, but, but it, is a, it, is, it can be used, the information there, for actually any other condition. What, what in principle are the technology that is out there that is being hugely developed at the moment? Of course, there is the gene therapy approaches to address, to address the primary genetic defect. If a gene is not working anymore, scientists work now to deliver a functional gene using a virus. There is this technology of exon skipping that uses molecular patches. Uh, and I ex explain this a bit better in, in my next slide, uh, a molecular patches to skip the mutation. Um, and then, of course, the incre to increase activity, but also delivery of so-called surrogate genes. And, and, and this means, for example, it's a good example is Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Robert was already alluding to, to, to the Eutrophin Alliance that, that, that the charity is working in partnership with. So dystrophin is not working, but there is a gene and that is very similar to, to dystrophin and, and that is, is active in, in, in a person's body. So, so the, the lab in Oxford of, of Dame Professor Kay Davis has worked since 20, since 20 years to raise the activity of, 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 of eutrophin so that, that, this, that this gene or the protein that is being made from this gene can then replace the function of dystrophin. And they have now got the first drug in clinical trial, which of course is great. And then we have, then we have other more adjunct, what I, would what I would kind of say drugs, that, that do not address the primary defect, but they, they, help, they help the effect of, uh, of, of maybe a drug or a treatment that, that addresses the primary, primary, uh, the primary genetic defect. And this is here improving muscle mass and strength. And, and I was just last week at, uh, at the World Muscle Society meeting in Berlin, and, and there are now a range, a range of, 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 of compounds tested um, to increase muscle mass, but they all link into, into my, uh, the myostatin pathway, more or less. And myostatin is, is, is a compound that actually reduces muscle mass in, in a body. So you have to remember everything is about balance. It, uh, the biological term is homeostasis. So you have factors that increase muscle mass and you have factors in your body that, that decrease the muscle mass and, and them working well together yeah, you, 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 get, you, get, you, you get you get the balance of, of what is a healthy muscle. So, but of course, in a person who has a muscle disease, I mean, the whole balance is out of sync. And what, what scientists are trying to do is trying to reduce this activity of myostatin, yeah? So if you reduce it in order then to increase, to increase muscle mass. And there are lots and lots of, uh, Pfizer is working, working on this, companies working on that, and I've, see, I've seen quite, I've seen quite a promising result. But of course, it's a very, very powerful pathway that is, that is being interfered with, and, and you really do have to see how this is going to work in, 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 a, in, a, human, in a human being. And then, of course, the identification of drugs, maybe that, that address various symptoms, reducing inflammation and fibrosis that, that happens, of course, when, muscles, when, when muscle tissue um, uh, dege degenerates, when it wastes away, when it breaks down, then, then the immune system gets, of course, active and, and, and invades to, to tidy up all, all, the, all the muscle debris, but of course, this this then kind of causes inflammation and, and, and the muscle tissue is then, of course, then uh, um, uh, replaced by fibrotic tissue and, uh, and that causes fibrosis. And if you, if you maybe, if you, if you I mean, the, the idea is that, that, that if, you, if you want, if you address the primary defect, you make the muscles functioning again. Maybe, maybe if you, if you kind of have an anti-fibrotic drug, maybe, maybe, there is the hope that this step could be reversible. But at the moment, this is more or less just the hope, you know, that, 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 there, that actually uh, a broken down or a muscle could kind of be, be, be strengthened again. But these would be kind of additional drugs to help 
whatever is whatever is 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 in development. So just quickly to Exxon Skipping, how ha Exxon Skipping has. Is, is, is something that the charity has, has kind of supported since over 20 years. I looked at the first publication where we were acknowledged and that came out in 1992. But it's, it, it, it has been so, so successful um, that it's being, that it's being now, now um, for Duchenne muscular dystrophy, that, that it's being tested in a variety of, of, con of conditions, maybe with, with adaptations and, and, and we just kind of, um, again, with the family's help in, in Ulrich, Ulrich Duchenne in Ulrich muscular dystrophy, we just kind of awarded a grant in, in, in Professor, uh, um, Professor Montoni's lab to, to, to use this uh, in a form of Ulrich CMD. But also we have, we have uh, a grants ongoing from Professor Wood to use this in SMA, and we hope we could use it in FSA, FSH, and, and we have other grants on going to improve what's currently in clinical trial as well in, in Professor, Professor um, Wood's lab. So what is this about? So if I, if I can show you here this, DMD is caused by genetic mutations that leads to an absence of dystrophin. How does this happen? So... So uh, the genetic code in a, in a gene, you have to imagine, is just a long piece of DNA. But the information cannot be read just throughout. The information is, 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 is encoded in, in kind of blocks. Like if you have certain pages of a book and only one page makes sense, and then, and then the next 10 pages, they are just kind of unreadable words. So, so of course, in order that information to be translated into a protein, all this, all this, all this nonsense, I can say, information has to be cut out. And these pieces where the information is located are called here exons. And so what can happen that if you have a, de a deletion of one of these exons, if you can see, the rest of the exons there, they don't fit anymore together. So that then leads to, that, that then leads to the fact that the information in that gene cannot be retrieved anymore. So exon skipping here uses small molecular patches. And basically, these small molecular patches, they take more out of the gene, but as such that the rest Actually fits actually fits fits together, and what is what is left of this gene can then be used to kind of form to kind of form a smaller dystrophin protein, but still kind of semi semi functional. But of course, and this is for example the case. If I go back, this is for example the case with Ulrich. Ulrich uh, congenital muscular dystrophy, it can also be the other way around. In Ulrich, um, Ulrich uh, uh, muscular dystrophy, um, uh, um, the people they have, they have the a genetic defect in one, of the two, in one of the two copies of a gene. And what, what, this, what this genetic defect leads to is that a protein is formed that then, that then, it has a, that then um, is detrimental to, to the muscle cell and disturbs whatever is going on in, the, in, 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 in this muscle cell so that the muscles actually break down. So what you want to then do is you want to render this gene inactive. So what you can then do is rather than taking an exon out to, 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 to make the information readable anymore, you can do the opposite. Oh, sorry. You can do the opposite. You can take something out so that, that it's not working anymore. And if then the gene that causes all the havoc is inactivated, the healthy copy can do its job properly. So there are loads and loads of different adaptations how this technology can be, can be used. Sorry. So for Duchenne, sorry, for Duchenne, Oh, sorry. For Duchenne, there are currently two clinical trials ongoing, one from Prosenza and, uh, uh, and one Sarepta. And the Sarepta trial that is ongoing, they kind of showed, uh, although only in 10 boys, so I have to say this, that after 144 four weeks, uh, there is a slower decline in walking ability, although, the, as I said, um, the study was, was very small, so further trials are required, although the company is trying to get a condition or accelerated approval in, in, in the U.S. based on these data. And 
Procensa, um, the company, they kind of did together with uh, uh, GlaxoSmithKline a phase three trial, and that did not show any effectiveness. But, I want to say, but it, the results, all the kind of the trial had to be stopped. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be too disappointed because the reason was that, and this, is, and this is a really good example, that outcome measures and understanding, understanding the patients that go into these clinical trials very well. What happened in this clinical trial was that that boys of, 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 of a certain age and of certain walking ability were enrolled in this clinical trial. But in some boys, this drug, and this, the, uh, the scientists understand this now, in some boys, this drug worked better than in others. So if you kind of analyze the whole group together, you kind of find that statistically the drug is not working. But if you do a so-called subgroup analysis, you find out that in some boys the drug has worked, where in others it hasn't worked. And actually, actually the, the, the key number here is it has worked better in boys who could walk at the start of the clinical trial more than 350 meters in six minutes. Whereas if, if the boys could, could walk less than 350 meters, for some reason the drug was not, the drug was not effective. And understanding that, understanding this kind of so-called natural history, natural history of the condition is really, really important. Again, the non-sexy part of, of research, but it is important to, to do the clinical trials. And they are, have done now the subgroup analysis, and they have admitted now already, I'm sorry, I did, I did the slides uh, a month ago, they have now submitted a, a new drug application to, to, to the F FDA, and the dialogue with the EMA here in Europe is, is, is ongoing. So the next steps, of course, is uh, um, for Duchenne. They have developed, developed this for Exxon 51. It's very personalized medicine. These molecular patches have to develop for a particular mutation. And, and the company is doing now further, further research to de develop it for other, for other mutations. But also, more importantly as well, is Exxon skipping is, is tested for SMA. Uh, for spinal mu muscular atrophy. I know that a company, it's called ISIS, they are doing a clinical trial, a phase three clinical trial now in the US. And for FSH muscular dystrophy, it, 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 could, be, it could be an idea because for FSH, there is also a protein being, being produced in the muscle cell that is toxic for the muscle cell. So you could, you, uh, you, it could be applied for that. For myotonic dystrophy, it's also in clinical trial in the US now and, um, and, and, and for some types of Ulrich muscular dystrophies um, it's, it's now in preclinical studies and as I said we're just kind of moving ahead with this with funding for the research. So just quite, quite quickly uh, what is Translana which has been developed by PTC Therapeutics, the first ever drug uh, that was approved. It says you know a potential therapy now it is it is a treatment now, and um, this is this is for patients who do have a nonsense mutation. So, um, Alison actually did this slide, and, and she did this quite well. So, if you if you if you can see here, the genetic code is 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 read is is read in three letters. So, the man and his and his dog run for the for the red bus, and and then and, and then the end kind of. Uh, signals, signals the end of, 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 of the information. And so, for example, if you have just one, a change of one letter, so originally there was an A, which says the man and his dog run for the red bus, then the information can be read. If you just have a change of one letter, and, and, and that, then this letter signals that the information stops here of the gene, then the protein is not being made. This also leads to, the, leads to, to information cannot be retrieved anymore and, 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 and the gene is not, being, is, is, not being, is, not, um, is not being used and the protein is not being made. So Translana is a drug that ignores this, this point mutation and, and, and just kind of reads through this and also kind of leads then to, to a full protein uh, um, um, to, 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 to be made. So, 
it, it was approved. This still says conditional approval, but I learned again last week from PTC Therapeutics that the regulators have allowed now to, 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 to call it is an approved drug. It is on the market now for one year. It's reviewed annually. So, and, and, and this is the condition about it, of course, and, it, 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 and this, gives, this, gives, this gives the company as well time to collect more data for a full license. But pri a, a parallel to this, there is a phase three trial ongoing to kind of further look at, at how, well, how well this drug is working. And as Robert alluded at the moment, here in this country, it's not yet available because although it has been approved, it needs to go through, through, um, through the uh, several stages of the, of, uh, of, of the NHS or, uh, or any other equivalents in order to kind, of, to kind of see. They have to approve it as well and, and, and endorse it so that it can be paid for. And I think it's likely to take a minimum of six months, so we hope that it will be then available uh, 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 next, next April. So who, who is this drug for? So the drug will be, um, of course, for those boys that have this nonsense mutation, which is about 13% uh, of all kind of boys with, with Duchenne. So it will be very for a very small number of, of boys. Um, it's for boys who are, five years, uh, who are five years old and who can still walk. And, um, and boys with m nonsense mutation, and as I said, this is about 10 is for, until to 15 percent. I actually asked PTC Therapeutics last, last week, so what happens, what actually happens if, if the drug is only approved for boys who still walk, and then during the time the boys get this drug, they suddenly become non-ambulant, can't walk anymore. Well, they said, they said that, that they would not stop the boys receiving the drug, which I kind of think is, of course, good. But let's see how, how, how it's going ahead. Yeah, so this is, this is then Translana. What about other clinical trials? As I, as I said, I mean, last, last week when I was at the World Muscle Society Conference in, uh, in, in Berlin, I think for the first time ever, I kind of saw such a big, presence of, of, of the biopharma of the biopharma industry. I mean it was for the first time that there was symposia there organized by by in, in the evenings or early morning by by, by the companies. And, and and this is of course great because you, you saw you saw this uphill struggle the, or the uphill struggle with clinical trials. We need to form partnership with the, with the industry because otherwise we will not get the drugs to the market. And they're now interested in it. They're, they're driving it forward. And of course, this is fantastic. And, and, and scientists and clinicians, they're now kind of also thinking, how, how does it look like? What do we need if drugs, if, if drugs are being approved in the clinic? We need to increase uh, the number of centers that can do clinical trials we need to increase um, the number of the number of centers that actually can can give those treatments. So it's 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 now already a completely different different thinking. Of course, with the other research ongoing, which is which is fantastic. So other clinical trials here you can see uh, um, um, last last week also was a lot of on limb girdle muscular dystrophy, and I think there are now three or four clinical trials ongoing for different forms of limb girdle muscular dystrophy to, de to deliver the missing, the missing gene with a virus. So, so it really kind of looks like, I don't know whether I'm kind of, whether I'm kind of uh, getting the message out to you, but I really do feel there are now a couple of, of technologies that do look promising and suddenly, suddenly there is this revival of and the enthusiasm in the scientific, in the scientific community to make sure that, that, the, that, that the whole potential of, of these technologies is being used for, uh, for, for, for other conditions. And also kind of uh, exon skipping. I mentioned that already. There is uh, um, SMTC 1100 uh, for Duchenne, which is, uh, which is going now into a phase two trial now, which is, which is uh, increasing the production of eutrophin. Omega pill for congenital muscular dystrophy. There is a phase one trial starting soon in the US. And then also Viagra for Duchenne. <laughs> for Duchenne. There is a phase three trial. Uh, of taladafil and 
sildenafil, and this is this is this is kind of increasing the blood flow to 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 the muscles. This is what what this drug would would be doing. So. So what is, what is now the future? I kind of already said that the number of clinical trials is growing, is growing greatly. And we need to kind of, as well as a charity, thinking differently and, and, and in addition to the research that we are doing, into, um, more about into, into, as well into inf infrastructure. Because I know, for example, that in London and Newcastle, where the major kind of major developed muscle centers are, they say we can't do any more clinical trials because we don't have any patient left, patients left. So we need to ensure that really kind of clinical trial centers are not only in London and in, in Newcastle, but maybe also in Birmingham, in Liverpool, Bristol, and Scotland. So how, how are we going to achieve this is, 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 is a kind of, of course, a huge a huge challenge because at the end of the day it's not what is expected now it's not one treatment that will do the trick even exon skipping or even de delivering uh, delivering now a, a, a microdystrophin for example which is which is a smaller dystrophin gene is 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 not going to be the cure it's going to 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 help to delay um, to delay the progression of the condition, but it might not completely prevent it. So it might ha it will have to be a combination of different drugs addressing as well different symptoms that kind of will do the trick. For example, as well, um, 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 the first uh, um, the, the exon skipping drug, the molecular patch, that is being developed by Sarepta now in the US, um, it's not going into the heart. So it's going into the muscles, but not the heart. So, so that, that's, of course, an issue, because you make the muscles stronger, but not the heart stronger. How is that going to look like? So, so, so there are kind of, there of course are issues there. And clinical trials are very expensive and might not always have the success that is hopeful. So what we also need to think about, what is our plan B? And this is why we can't stop now investing into, into, into research that is going on in, in, in the laboratory. I know, I know when, I, when I talk to our supporters, to the families, they, they like to kind of fund something that is close to clinical trial, if not kind of have, have an immediate effect. But what about if that is not going to work? We need to kind of spread that risk. Risk. And, and of course, even if, it, if, it, if it's working, it might need to have some optimization. So we need to have all this thinking, thinking around. And, and of course, once proof of concepts can be shown for one condition, there will be cross-fertilization into other diseases. I wrote that about, about probably two years ago when I kind of first showed this slide. Now kind of, when I went to the muscles, World Muscle Society now, I can really kind of feel how, how, how this is going to pan out. And of course, my last slide, the road to treatments. We want to have a, a road that goes just straight on. We want to understand the milestones. We want to know when we get there, but how this road actually in reality looks like more like this. It's serpentine, it goes round in curves. Sometimes anybody, including the scientists, get knocked off on the turns, in, in the turns. We just need to make sure we all work together in order to get back on the track because one day we will get to the top. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> so if, you do, if you do have some questions from me, Otherwise, otherwise, it's it's just please please go and have a look to at our posters for the rest of the session, and uh, discuss what you want to know. Ask Libby about patient registries, um, and talk to us. Thank you. <laughs>